Hello and welcome back to Katawa Shoujo! Last time we... Got blindfolded! And uh, did things! And then had a heart attack! Uh, and then I think we just cut to this moment. The loud clatter of books falling into the return slot abruptly breaks the grip of silence over the school library. It's become a habit for me to come to the library at least once a week. Not only does the reading itself keep me busy, but discussing books with Hanako and Lily also does. Obviously startled, Yuko suddenly twists toward the direction of the noise. I've, I'd have thought her used to people dropping books by now, since she does work here. Oh, hello, Hisao. Back again? It takes me a moment to respond. My mind is still distracted by the familiar melody of Lily's humming that's hardly left my ears in the several days it's been since I fell asleep to it. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Just returning some books I borrowed. She casts her eyes downwards, presumably to the bin the books dropped into. You're, very, you're a very heavy reader, aren't you? It's become a bit of a routine now, passes the time at least. I wish I had free time to pass. From small talk to depression in less than five seconds. I think that's a new record for her. She seems a bit down in general today, even compared to normal. Considering how, considering she has to work two jobs just to support herself, I could see how that could take a toll on her lifestyle. Come to think of it, the pay for her job here can't be all that bad. The idea of staff in such a prestigious private school going hungry strikes me as counterintuitive. Working two jobs must take a lot of time. I'd probably never manage it. You're lucky being a student. Do you think you'll be able to go to university? If she's asking, then I guess that's the expected result of having this kind of education. Private schools like this don't exactly come cheap. I guess. I have the money, I think. I've got plans which will require going to one, and my grades are good enough, it's more a matter of how I'll pay to do so. University costs so much that I'm having to work two jobs to afford to enter it. Paying for daily expenses too makes it a lot harder. If you're reading this much though, that means you're doing well in school, right? Huh, not necessarily. Interesting logical jump, not altogether a wrong one though. I suppose so, I didn't find any of the exams very hard, aside from maybe one or two. Do you mind if I ask what studies you're pursuing in university? Yuko appears to genuinely brighten at the question. Anthropology. To be specific, I'm specializing in the history of classical era and... Athenian civilization and democracy. She really seems to know her stuff. Such enthusiasm is to be admired, and it's nice to see her genuinely excited about something. I guess even somebody like Yuko can be happy if she has a, vis a visible road ahead of her. That's good to hear if you- <laughs> Both of us jump at the sudden interruption coming from my pocket. Apologizing profusely and quickly shuffling into the hallway as I fumble with the cover of my mobile phone, I glance at the screen. Weird. It's a mobile number I don't recognize. Considering I can count the number of people with my number on one hand, I briefly wonder whether it's some telemarketer that lucked out. Hello, Hisao Nakai speaking. Geez, pick up faster next time. Anyway, guess who? It only takes me a second to recognize the distinctly deep, brush, brusque voice. Hey, Misha, didn't expect you to call me. Huh? You actually think I sound like her? Not at all, Akita. I don't remember giving you my number, though, so I thought I'd mess with you. Oh, that. I got Lily to give it to me. Not hard. She positively brimmed with pride at the statement. She's trying to get me caught up in her pace, I know it. I suppose I shouldn't be surprised that the two would share my number, though, given how close they are. So what's up? You free right now? I guess. Why? Could you meet me at the park in town? I just want to talk to you about some stuff. Is that an invitation to a date? What? Of course not. She sounds suddenly crestfallen. Her previous teasing nature having instantaneously left, it seems strange for her. Anyway, I don't see why not. When do you want to meet? Kind of now-ish. Wait, right now? But it's... 
The dead silence suddenly coming from the phone announces the fact that she has unceremoniously hung up. Alright. For a long time I just stand there staring at the call ended message on the screen while replaying the conversation in my head. What the hell, Akita? I mean, she said now-ish. I, sh I assume she was just done with that conversation. Throwing a glance up and down the street, I cross the road and step into the park. I've learned to pace myself on such walks, mostly because Lily's slower speed during our forays in town means I have to consciously slow myself down. That aside, I hope Akira didn't expect me to be immediately prompt. Well, she didn't give you a time, she just said to show up. Oh look. It's Akira. She gets her own CG! I didn't know her ears were pierced. It takes only a couple of seconds to spot her, waiting on a bench with a can of beer in her hand. You can't drink in public! That's illegal! The look she gives me as I walk up lacks any hint of acknowledgement or greeting. What's with that look? I needn't have come, you know. I knew you would. You're that kind of person, after all. I lower my brow at her remark as she disposes of the can, emptied by the time I arrived and the metallic clank clatter rings out. Akita takes a seat on the old wooden bench and I follow her lead. She takes another can of beer from beside her and opens it before speaking, taking a large gulp. She seems to be really she seems to really like that stuff. I suppose I don't need to ask what this is about, or rather who it's about. I heard from Lily that you asked about our family. They share more than phone numbers, that's for sure. I'd probably be very worried right now if it weren't for the total lack of malice in her voice. Rather, her tone sounds almost wistful. Idle curiosity, mostly. I have to admit, I'd never have guessed you two were half Scottish. She gives a wry chuckle of amusement. I've heard that before, trust me. A small smile falls from her face, her eyes looking ahead distantly. Aside from the occasional elder couple taking, talking as they slowly walk the meandering paths and the odd aging car, it's quiet. It's pleasantly quiet. She didn't tell you everything, though, did she? It was pretty brief. Your parents live in Scotland, she hasn't met them since she was 12, and she wants to meet them again. It's always surprised me how devoted she is to our parents, for all the good they did us. The way she says it sounds almost derisive. She gives a small sigh as if to quickly brush the feelings away. Drink. Why do you think they left you so? Why do I think they left? From what Lily told me, it's because of work. I guess a pretty decently paying job was all involved as well, given the way your parents seem to live. So Lily went to a private school, and that's why she carries herself with the airs of great and graces of the upper class. Yeah, since the business in Inverness boomed, our father decided to move directly to the same city as its headquarters. That's just the conclusion I thought you'd come to, though. You're too good-natured. You don't think they left for their career? I'm sitting here bitching to you about it. What do you think? Yamalaku Academy. I've always felt that place was kind of creepy. Like it was an isolated hideaway for those proper society doesn't want to see nor hear. They probably just rue the fact that Lily wasn't old enough to be shoved there by the time they left. A long silence follows her abrupt and very harsh criticism of her own parents and Yamaku. Lily's blindness is hardly something that could be simply ignored for a high-class family attempting to keep up appearances, much less so when a lucrative offer is on the table. Eventually, Akira gives a derisive snort, her feelings coming to a head. Moving to secure our financial future with his new job posting, even at the time, I hardly believed it. Not wanting to simply be an avenue for her venting, I gently try to steer the discussion. So you stayed in Japan with Lily then? Either I stayed with her, or she went to live with an ailing grandmother and grandfather. What about Shizune's family? If you're cousins, then... Our fathers hate each other. I'd have been more, happy, more than happy to tell them to go screw themselves and live with them anyway, but Lily wouldn't have wanted that. I'd also had an offer for a job by then, so we did our best to keep our parents' house in proper shape and tried to continue our lives as if they'd never left. 
So you just live by yourselves? Basically, Lily had school and I had my job, so we weren't exactly languishing. With her schooling, her study, and having to do chores while I worked, though, I can't help feeling like I failed her. In the end, I tried to be there for her and screwed it up. Expecting a 19-year-old to be a mother for a blind child, it's ridiculous. So, Lily and Akita lived alone after their parents moved. With Lily largely taking care of herself, I guess that explains her apparent independence compared to Minnie and Yamaku. I may have lived alone much of the time since my parents both worked, but that's just something else entirely. Sorry for making you listen to my moaning, Hisao. I don't mind at all, but don't you mind if I ask why you're telling- Do you mind if I ask why you're telling me all this? <laughs> you're always so- You always were curious. Context, I suppose. Life isn't a fairy tale, he said. Some people have to learn that the hard way. She takes a long drink from the can in her hand, her face becoming more depressed than distant. I broke up with my boyfriend a few days ago. After I leave, we're not going to be able to see each other again. But that's how life is. You can't just set your life up and expect it to stay that way forever. Sometimes stuff happens that you have to roll with, even if it means hurting yourself or others. She takes a long breath before looking up at the bright orange sky. Damn. If I smoked, I could take a long drag right about now and look kinda cool. I want to respond to help her in whatever way I can, but I feel utterly useless. This kind of situation is one I've never been in, and I simply don't have the experience to say anything meaningful to comfort her. Akita looks over and evidently picks up on this, much to my embarrassment. I must look pretty pathetic right now, whining about this to someone I barely know. Hardly, I'm pretty much an expert on looking pathetic. Haha. -ha. She gives a chuckle and the act feeling like a personal victory for me. You're a good kid, Hisao. When I said that I approved of you being with my sister, I wasn't joking or just being nice. She picks herself up off the seat with a grunt, one that seems ill-fitting given her age, and throws the now empty can into the bin after one last swig. It's just unfortunate that it doesn't really count for much in this world. Alright, I guess we're being edgy. When I said I was leaving for Scotland, I was doing it because a good position opened in our company head company's headquarters. When our folks told me that when, when our folks told me that when we were at their place though, they also gave Lily a summons to rejoin them in, in Inverness. No way. Her evasiveness when asked about her future, that awkwardness that had steadily grown between us, that uncharacteristic outburst of anger, all of them suddenly fit into place. The same family that rem rem that she reminisced about having- oh my gosh, this is not a good time for me to be stumbling over words. The music is so, so intense. The same family that she reminisced about ha after Hanako's birthday party. The same family that left her and Akita to themselves after taking flight to greener pastures. Now I feel stupid for never cornering Lily on what was bugging her. I'd never even considered if something had happened during her trip to her family's home at Inverness. And now a sense of unease grows in my chest if her family had summoned her to join them in Scotland, all the way on the other side of the earth. Has she accepted? Lily hasn't told me whether she plans to accept, and it seems she hasn't told you either. That's what I called you down here to talk- That's why I called you down here to talk, Isao. Context, huh? I sit back, my feelings of worry and frustration no doubt written all over my face. Lily's a strong person, but she's not infallible. I guess it's my job to worry about her being her older sister, but I think that you deserve to know. I understand. You okay? You sound depressed. Well, duh. Of course I'm not particularly happy. Why would I be? No, I'm just thinking. That's good. Thinking is good. Being rash won't get you anywhere. She looks at her watch, barely moving a wrist. I gotta go. Will you be okay? I'll be fine, don't worry. I'll have to talk to Lily about it and get everything sorted out. She gives a smile, but it doesn't feel all that genuine or sincere. 
Really, both of us are dancing around the fact that Lily's on the precipice of the biggest decision of her life and is trying to take the entire burden on herself. And part of that burden is the matter of our relationship. By the time I look up, Akita's already walking off with her hand held up. For the first time in a long while, I finally have an answer to something. Perhaps not even that, but at least I now have the right question to ask. Will you leave or stay? I feel like I'm going to be faced with an with with a question and what I would actually answer is not going to be uh the correct answer. Hurry, Lily. I'm moving as fast as I can. I can barely make out Lily's voice over the deafening pounding of the rain, even though I dislike pulling her around the situation calls for it. I turn forward my free hand over my head in a futile attempt to keep at least my hair dry. My vision seems to be in grayscale. This really is rotten weather for summer and the last kind of climate I'd want for a date. A pity. I'd even checked the weather forecast beforehand. One of the very few times I've ever done so. Only to s for it to say that Sunday afternoon would be fine. Looking to Lily, her shoulders are by now completely drenched with her right hand ho holding tightly to mine, and her left hand gripping her retracted cane. This horrid downpour came on just as we were up between our destination and Yamaku, so we decided to try rushing the rest of the distance rather than double doubling back. Entirely unused to running this fast, Lily is using all her concentration to avoid tripping over. Hisao, do you know where you're going? Wait. Yeah. Even she's reduced to shouting to try to be heard over the combined noise of the wind and rain. The sh- The rest of my voice is completely drowned out by even heavier bursts of rain. The what? The Shanghai! How far is it? It shouldn't be far now. It doesn't take long before I call out to her once again. It looks like we're safe. Just It's just up ahead. I quickly pull up to stop just in front of the familiar exterior, the lantern outside still giving off its reliable glow, and wait for Lily to catch her breath before going in. Ladies first. She had a little smile. She says, yes, I am a lady. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> the tiny bell inside rings out when I hold the door open for her, a smile and a polite nod being my reward before entering myself. As I step in behind her and wipe my feet, only a quick glance is necessary to notice the distinct lack of, ac lack of activity. The Shanghai doesn't seem to get much in the way of patronage, and today is no different. Only a couple of tables are occupied. Summoned by the bells ringing, a most expected person comes to greet us. Welcome to the Shanghai! Yuko looks chipper today. Trying to predict her moods is pretty hard, but it's a nice change from the norm. Hello, Yuko. Hey. Good afternoon, you two. <laughs> she just drops like a rock. She takes a deep bow, somewhat taken aback as she writes herself again and gets a better look at us. What happened to you? You both look... Her eyes drift towards the glass of the door up behind us. Oh, oh dear. We're inside now, at least. I think that's the most important thing. It's nice and cozy. You're lucky to be working outside today. Doesn't she work inside like every day? Since she works at a library and in a restaurant that doesn't appear to have outdoor seating? It's been nice and quiet. I like days like this. Oh, wait. Um, sorry. Is there anything you'd like? French vanilla tea, please. I'll have the same. <laughs> right, coming right up. She quickly skitters off with a determined look on her face, trying very hard not to forget our orders. If nothing else, she is at least dedicated to her jobs. Plural. I lead Lily to an empty seat before the two of us settle down. As usual, there's a large difference between my exhausted flopping down into my seat and Lily's delicate sliding into hers, her cane set beside her. For a while, I just idly watch the rain falling outside. The occasional person runs down the street trying to stay as dry as possible. Hands often tightly gripping a rain-soaked umbrella. Isn't it? I don't know if this is true, but I have heard 
that running in the rain actually gets you more wetterer. And again, I don't know if that's true, but I choose to believe it. Lily sits just as quietly as I, her eyes closed as she intently listens to all that's happening. It's a comfortable, relaxing silence that exists between us, just the type that we'd so often shared together in the past months. For Lily, at least. I can't help replaying the words of her sister in my mind at times, contrasting them to both our time spent together since I entered Jamaku, and to the way we've been since we started dating. No matter how much I try, I can't work Lily out. It's as if the harder I try to second-guess her, emotion her emotions and her potential decision, the more difficult it becomes to reach a clear conclusion. It makes me doubt whether I'd ever really understood her. In the end, I'm going to ask, even though I very much want to avoid doing so. You seem quiet today, Hisao. Yeah, well, I'm about to really ruin this mood, so, uh, prepare yourself. Really? You seem so enthusiastic about taking me out on a date, I assumed you had something specific you wanted to do. No, not really, just wanted to spend some time with you. Is that so? Fine, there was one thing. A little grin finds its way on the little space, her knowing full well that she's bested me. It makes what I want to say all the more awkward. It was just... Akira and I were talking. Oh? What's with that tone? You two do seem to get along well, don't, don't you? Well, I do think she's a pretty cool person to talk with. It'd be nice if any of the teachers were anything like her. Cool. For a moment, I try to place her tone of voice, my mouth curling into a smirk as I realize it. You're not jealous, are you? I'm not jealous. After her teasing me over such a thing on our first date, I don't feel too bad having a little laugh at her expense this time around. As we settle down, though, it's only a minor distraction from the real point of why I brought Lily here. Don't worry, it was mostly just everyday stuff. That said, there was something Akita mentioned that I wanted to talk to you about. When you went to see your family in Inverness a while back, she said, Akita told you about my family summons, hasn't she? Seconds tick by while I try to read Lily's expression, an odd mixture of feelings written on it. She seems annoyed, but also somewhat confused. Um, here. Yuko tentatively slides our drinks onto the table, her presence oddly small. Well, she can sense the mood. She's like, well, I'm doing my job, but I ain't, I ain't sticking around. As she walks back to the counter after a quick, polite nod, I realize the air between me and Lily is thick and our expressions are both somewhat pensive. Even though she says I should lead my own life, she still interferes at the worst times. I don't think you should blame Akita here. She's just looking out for you, and it's not like I can't understand her concern over this. Lily's irritation gives way to an awkward and largely unsuccessful attempt to mask her feelings. She really doesn't deal well with being cornered on personal topics. I know, but I just wanted some more time. I knew you'd have figured it out eventually, but... You were intentionally hiding this from me? For how long were you planning to do so? As I said, I simply wanted more time to think it through. I wanted to be sure of my decision before telling you. What did you decide to do in the end? I know what I want her to say, but an awful feeling refuses to leave my gut. My family does dearly want me to return to them, and Akira will be going as well. I could still teach as a career, whether it be here or there. So you're going. How long have you known? I already know you were asked when you first went to Scotland about a month ago. Some... time. My frustration nearly boils over. The fact that she's done this affects me more than it should. For her to not only be leaving, but to have been actively hiding her own plans from me, and after seeming for so long to be the one solid pillar of support and reliability I could depend on, it feels as if the foundation underneath me is suddenly shifting drastically, much faster than I can adapt to. Perhaps this isn't so much frustration as sheer unease. Lily. I'm sorry. I just... I wanted to think this through completely. I wasn't trying to take advantage of you. Please. 
I know, Lily. I know. This is just really sudden. I guess this means that once you go, we'll be breaking up. For one of the few times I've seen since I met her, she's genu genuinely lost for words. She doesn't look surprised, no doubt, because the fact had dawned on her once she became sure of her decision. But rather, she appears genuinely unsure of how to deal with the situation now that, it's in, now that it's in front of her. We could try pursuing a long distance relationship. They're getting more and more common these days, after all. Even as she says it, the tone of her voice gives away and gives away that she doesn't truly believe what she's saying. Lily is far too old fashioned to be able to cope with a relationship without any kind of physical presence. And even I am, to an extent. All we would ever be able all we would ever be to each other would be a voice from the other side of the world. In the end, trying to rationalize everything is futile. Any attempts to try and connect what's happening to the future or past just seems to get more difficult the more I concentrate. Those quiet moments when we just walked side by side, the precious time we spent with Hanako and Akita. The casual chatter we had during lunch times, the times we made love, the confessions of our feelings to each other, all pointless. All just fleeting moment a fleeting moment in our young lives. We're just two children pretending to be adults, aren't we? A long, long silence hangs in the air between us. The noise of the other patrons drinking and talking only makes the situation feel more strange and disconnected. Lily's face remains low, her dejected expression clouding it. I'm sorry, he saw. A simple apology and no more. She's left entirely without any further response or comment. With a long sigh, I gather what's left of my thoughts and ask the final question I have for her. When will you be going? I'll be leaving with Akira, so it'll be a little less than a week. The beginning of summer holidays? Just a little afterwards, yes. Her tone is unusually slow and steady, her apologetic and depressed mood all the more written on her face as she tries to hide it in her voice. In the end, I can't even keep my promise of going to Tanabata with her before she leaves. I'm looking into the same cup of tea I looked into earlier. I look down, seeing my face reflected in the now lukewarm cup of neglected tea sitting in front of me. I really thought I'd left this kind of expression behind. For a while, I just stare down into the still surface, trying to sort through my emotions to get what, to get at what course of action I should take, whether it be right now or in the future. But just as before, the effort is wasted. I glanced up to see Lily gently sipping her cold tea without complaint, her face drawn and shoulders slumped. She looks to be deep in thought, too, a strangely cold atmosphere coming between us as we isolate ourselves to mull things over. Even as Lily's cup slowly empties, mine remains untouched. It's a long time before I notice the rain dying down outside and a few other patrons of the Shanghai having left. We're just taking up seats as we sip tea sadly. The chill of the rapidly darkening evening permeates the dormitory hallways. While trudging down the corridor to my room, I see an unwelcome movement from up ahead. Fuck off, Kinji! This isn't the time! He looks happy, though. He's like, yeah. It was me. I sabotaged your date. I made it rain. And I made Lily go to Scotland. Sure enough, the opening of the door opposite mine heralds the arrival of a bespectacled Kinji. That is the only version of Kinji I've ever seen. Hey man, what's... Whoa, dude, you look awful, I think. You okay? He really has a knack of for making any situation better. Is that a joke? I... Don't really want to go into it. It's late. Okay, that's cool. I didn't really want to know anyway. I just asked out of common courtesy. If you ever want to talk about it, I'm, you know, here. I look at him for a moment before surrendering my stern front and awkwardly scratching the back of my neck, embarrassed by my standoffish response to him. Thanks, Kenji. Hey, it's cool. That's what friends are for, right? Sabotaging each other's relationships, you know. Yeah, you're right. Um, see ya. I open the door to my own, the door to my own dorm room, and close it behind me as he quickly waves me off. Wow, why are we slamming doors? The solid thud of my door 
makes against the door frame sounds out a final call for my, the life I've led since coming to Yamaku. I fucked up somewhere, didn't I? This doesn't seem like a good end. This seems like a bad end, really. Maybe a neutral end. Definitely not a good one, though. But I got all the sex scenes. Doesn't that mean I got the good end? I stand- I just stand in my dark- darkened room, fruitlessly attempting to work out what I should do from this point onwards. Just what should I do? Okay, it's continued. I felt like if it was a- if it was a bad end, it would've just ended there. I could be wrong, though. It could end after this one. But I am going to wait. Okay. Um, that did not, that did not fill me with much confidence. I thought maybe I was going to get a good ending. Maybe I still am and I'm being, I'm being debated. But I really don't, uh, I have no faith. I am pretty sure that I am getting a neutral slash bad ending. And, uh, I don't know. I don't know what to think of the situation. That's kind of difficult because I don't think that, I think I don't think Lily's doing the wrong thing, um, because she's didn't she didn't a hundred percent know how she wanted to do things, and I'm sure she just wants to enjoy her time with Hisao while she can, but she's still supposed to tell him if she is going somewhere. That's just the rules. So I don't know. It's kind of it's a very Unique and scary situation, I think. But, uh, we will see what's going down in the next video.